Hello, I'm Yvette Torres, and welcome to the Road to Recovery 2010. In traveling to events throughout the country and hearing the success stories from others, I am touched by the efforts of so many individuals and organizations who have helped celebrate Recovery Month. Recovery Month, held each September, serves to celebrate individuals who have overcome addiction and are living healthy and fulfilling lives in recovery as well as to honor and recognize the efforts of those who have helped them along the way. Recovery Month also promotes the message that treatment for alcohol and drug use disorders is effective and recovery is possible. Aided by the efforts of treatment specialists, friends, family members, co-workers, and entire communities, millions of individuals around the country are enjoying fulfilling productive lives in recovery, free from alcohol and drugs. But we must continue our work to reach individuals and their families who are still in need of services. Alcohol and drug use disorders affect over 20 percent of Americans. Not only are individuals and their families affected, but so are businesses, the criminal justice and social service systems, the healthcare industry, and virtually every other sector of society. I really appreciate your acknowledging the importance of all of the community working together, uh, states, we, our states, our cities and counties, our tribes, our community-based organizations, law enforcement, our prevention community, mental health community, our primary care community, all working together. And the President's statements really support that. And as uh, we address the issue of health care reform and health insurance, clearly uh, without the uh, participation of the whole community, uh, recovery is not possible. The National Survey of Drug Use and Health is the most comprehensive survey of substance use and mental disorders and the treatment services for those disorders in the United States. The 2008 survey found significant decreases from 2002 to 2008 in illicit drug use by youth aged 12 to 17. We've made tremendous progress in the past several years, but our progress has been stalled, particularly around marijuana use among young people aged 12 to 17. We need to reinvigorate our efforts, and I'm excited about the new leadership at ONDCP. With Director Kurlikowski's leadership, new ideas, and a fresh approach, fresh approaches are being developed to prevent substance use and treat disorders and promote recovery. This year's theme, Together We Learn, Together We Heal, calls all of us to unite and encourage drug-free living. Treatment programs and family members and neighbors can all help assist those who experience addiction. And I have not met anyone in this country who, through a friend, a colleague, a co-worker, uh, or a relative, has not experienced uh, uh, some form of a, of a very difficult situation as a result of the things that we are all trying to make better in this nation. Intervention has helped put national awareness of this illness front and center, and we're very proud of that. But we realize that there is much more that we can do to help, which is why last year a &E launched the Recovery Project, a wide-ranging initiative designed to help raise awareness that addiction is a treatable disease and recovery is possible. By working with the National Recovery Month partners and collaborating with leaders at SAMHSA and ONDCP, the, the Recovery Project is helping make strides to end the stigma that surrounds addiction. I'm able to live the life that I only dreamed about or we talked about but thought was never achievable. I'm living a personal dream today, and that's no exaggeration. I have a job that I love. I work with a population net, you know, and I know that we, we share that, um, of people just like me, you know, people that need to know, you know, that there's a better way. And it's not so much what I say, but it's also how I carry myself. To be an active role model for long-term recovery, to show people that long-term recovery is achievable, it's possible, it's a reality. The past 19 years of my life have been nothing short of miraculous. I've been to the top of the Eiffel Tower and have seen Paris from 1,000 feet at sunset. I've been swimming with Barracuda at 100 feet underwater in the Caribbean. I've had a hand in raising two beautiful children who graduated from the University of Georgia, go dogs, and are young adults who care about their planet and their community. I've cried with family and friends as they experience the trials, tribulations, joy, and happiness that life brings, and I continue to happily share my life with my partner of 12 plus years. None of this would have been possible without 
long-term recovery. The Recovery Month theme, Together We Learn, Together We Heal, is very appropriate. It is this coming together, uh, the coalition building, that makes us a strong feel. And we have all been touched by addiction in one way or another, and we have all seen the great triumphs of people in recovery. 20th anniversary of Recovery Month. This year's theme, Together We Learn, Together We Heal, reminds us of the many people, resources, and materials that contribute to the recovery process. It reminds us that substance abuse affects more than the person who is addicted. As I've mentioned this morning, it affects family, friends, coworkers, everyone who depends on who cares about that person. We need to use all available resources in our communities and on the Internet to help uh, those we care about find their recovery. Looking around, I do see a host of like-minded people committed to building safe, healthy, and drug-free communities. Each of you is making a difference. And we are at an exciting point where I think we can really see some results. Your efforts will bring national attention to this issue and increase funding for prevention and treatment. And I'm sure you've all had a very busy month so far. We're 10 days into September, and we've already seen some great events, and there is so much more in store. As everyone here knows, National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month is celebrating its 20th anniversary, and there are activities being organized throughout the country. It is truly exciting that we're able to use these opportunities to increase awareness and understanding of sub substance abuse and addiction. This year's theme is Join the Voices for Recovery. It's a positive message that is so important for people to hear. The many compelling stories of recovery are real and can help bring hope and healing to people who are struggling with addiction. And it's your enthusiasm and focus that is helping to drive this message and keep up the momentum for this critically important cause from our homes and our classrooms all of the way to the halls of Congress. The gratitude that I have one day at a time for being sober and that's how I stay sober is by t doing 12-step work, uh, by paying it forward, uh, by giving it, uh, giving away to, you know, uh, giving it away to the next person that needs it. Instead of giving it back to somebody, um, I'm able to identify with people that are still struggling in addictions and help them understand that there is a better life without drugs and alcohol. The Recovery Month campaign commemorated its 20th anniversary in 2009. Let's take a look back at the history of this campaign that has helped transform lives and families through the power of recovery. I have overcome something that, that, is taking, that had taken control of my life. And that is something to be proud of. Um, because my life was unmanageable. I was powerless over drugs and alcohol. I'm grateful that I'm a recovering alcoholic. Yesterday I just celebrated my 26th anniversary of sobriety, certainly the biggest accomplishment of my life. If being sober means you can't rock, I think that's wrong. You know, you can do a lot of cool stuff in sobriety. Events like this are real good for the people that are new to sobriety to show them that we can have fun and be sober at the same time. Recovery means you can pull out of that dive and turn around, and I know it's true because people showed me how to do it, and I'm 24 years sober now. The Recovery Month message is one that we need to articulate at every opportunity. We all have an opportunity to participate in that. And again, I pick up on the theme of plurality in this year's Recovery Month theme. Together we learn, together we heal, together we can prevail. This is Recovery Month's 20th year. SAMHSA has been pleased to sponsor the observance and is extremely thankful for the Recovery Month planning partners for their fervent support. When the Recovery Month campaign began 20 years ago, it was known as Treatment Works. It celebrated individuals who worked in the field of addiction treatment and recovery. Nelva Chavez has been appointed by President Clinton as the first administrator of SAMHSA. 
In 1997, working with CSAT, a group of national and community-based organizations, government entities, and the recovery community became the first planning partners. These partnerships are the driving force in the campaign even today and help CSAT each year to determine the theme and messaging for the effort. In 1998, Treatment Works was renamed National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month. The observance was expanded to include the celebration of individuals and their families who have achieved recovery as well as those who serve in the field of prevention, treatment, and recovery. 1999 brought even more milestones. Recovery Month events held around the nation included recovery walks in Connecticut and Hands Across the Bridge, a Labor Day celebration in Oregon. By 2000, the number of community events held in celebration of Recovery Month had doubled from the previous year. And production began on the first full season of the Road to Recovery television program. Nice job. You can recover from drug and alcohol addiction. The message today at Recovery Day in Salt Lake City. Since 2002, presidential proclamations have been issued officially declaring September as National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month. RecoveryMonth.gov was launched in 2003. This interactive website continues to grow and offers all Recovery Month print and multimedia products to millions of visitors. Treat me. Treat me with understanding. Treat me. Treat me with courtesy. In 2005, Recovery Month hit the Big Apple as the campaign's Treat Me public service announcement aired on the Panasonic Astrovision screen in Times Square. The spot aired every hour throughout the entire month of August. Faces and Voices of Recovery held their first Rally for Recovery as part of Recovery Month, which brings together thousands of people and organized events across the country. Last year, 40,000 people participated in 80 coordinated events across the country. So, you know, 10 years ago, that was an unthinkable thing. I think that's a, a great testament to the work that SAMHSA has done in pioneering and in operationalizing an idea. I think we really need to give ourselves a hand at the work that's been generated and created in 20 years. Recovery Month is a time to celebrate those who have reclaimed their lives and achieved long-term recovery, as well as the dedicated individuals in the treatment and recovery field who have made the recovery journey possible. We at SAMHSA are grateful for the efforts of millions of Americans making Recovery Month what it is today. We look forward to another 20 years of supporting those in recovery. It's essential that I give back. It's not optional for me in my recovery. It is, an, it is a critical, important healing part of the therapy of my recovery. And what I mean by that is, is that in order for me to keep the recovery that I have, I must give it back to others. It's, it is a critical component of my recovery. The United States is a diverse nation, and Recovery Month reflects this diversity. There were 1,000 events held throughout the nation posted on the Recovery Month site. They all helped to promote the 2009 theme, Join the Voices for Recovery, Together We Learn, Together We Heal. There were walks, fairs, concerts, picnics, art displays, educational events, sober motorcycle rides, baseball games, and many other types of events in which millions of Americans participated to celebrate recovery. These events 
brought together individuals who are living healthy and productive lives in recovery. Their families, treatment service providers, and entire communities to raise awareness about the benefits of addiction treatment and the hope of recovery. I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you who contributed to making this year's Recovery Month celebration a success. Your tireless efforts helped increase awareness that addiction is treatable and recovery is possible. By organizing, planning, or participating in an event, you also supported individuals in recovery and helped deliver the message that there is hope for those still in need of services. Citizens in California join together for a fun-filled day at the park to celebrate Recovery Fest. In addition to nice weather, attendees got to enjoy listening to live music, eating delicious food from the grill, and networking with others in the recovery community. Brandywine Counseling hosted its fourth annual Recovery Month softball tournament at the Sports at the Beach Complex in Georgetown, Delaware. Players were divided into teams for a day of friendly competition, food, and sober fun. Addiction recovery advocates in Colorado got to enjoy a day at the ballpark as they attended a Colorado Rockies baseball game. The home team went on to win the game, and the attendees even got a shout out on the big screen. Dawn Farm hosted their 36th anniversary jamboree in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The goal of the event was to raise awareness about the tremendous power of recovery and to raise funds that enabled Dawn Farm to continue their mission to provide services for those who have no other resources. The free event was open to people of all ages and featured tons of activities for all to enjoy, including live music, hay rides, pony rides, and a silent auction of donated items. In honor of Recovery Month, recovery advocates in Michigan gathered on the lawn of the state capitol in Lansing for a rally for recovery. Highlights of the event included guest speakers from the treatment field, policymakers, and the voices of those in recovery. Additionally, there was live music and fun activities for kids. In honor of Recovery Month, the Focus Ministry at Gethsemane Baptist Church hosted a faith-based open house in the Bronx. The Freedom Only Comes Under Surrendering Ministry is a spiritual-based, Christ-centered ministry for substance abuse prevention. The event featured food, guest speakers, music from the choir, and group praise. Choices Recovery Services made their contribution to Recovery Month by holding a Recovery in the Park celebration in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Attendees enjoyed a nice day outdoors and were able to celebrate recovery together with food, fun, games, and prizes. The Maryland State Alcohol and Drug Abuse Administration held a kickoff festival for prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery resource providers in Catonsville, Maryland. The event was highlighted by the governor's proclamation and also featured breakfast, speakers, and vendor displays. Preferred Family Healthcare's Achieving Recovery Through Creativity program hosted an arts and awareness festival in honor of Recovery Month. The festival featured an art exhibit, performances, awareness activities, and refreshments, and was open to all who wished to attend. Clients and families of several recovery agencies in Pennsylvania were treated to a day at the park as they attended a Pittsburgh Pirates baseball game. The night of fun and unity was capped off by a Pirates win. The State Capitol Building in Sacramento, California was the site of the Recovery Happens Rally held in celebration of Recovery Month. The event included guest speakers, information booths, live music, and food. 
In addition, people had the option to attend AA and NA meetings inside the Capitol building. The Denver City and County Building was the location of a Colorado rally for recovery. Citizens gathered at the building to celebrate recovery with a variety of activities and entertainment, including a walk, speakers, celebrity guests, live music, food, and fun. Recovery advocates in Florida came together to enjoy a full day of activities by attending a Ride for Recovery and Rally at Daytona Beach. The ride began at Destination Daytona with stops along the way for raffles, prizes, and lunch before ending at the Band Shell in Daytona Beach. After the ride, event attendees enjoyed further entertainment including displays, line dancing, and live music. Both Washington and Oregon kicked off Recovery Month with ceremonies on each side of the Interstate Bridge. The events featured stories from people in recovery, elected officials, and a reading of the proclamation from the governor's office. Native American drumming groups played as members from the two states joined hands across the bridge and recited the serenity prayer. The festivities continued afterward with tons of food and music. Members of the Reno Sparks Indian Colony enjoyed a collaboration of festivities by celebrating Recovery Month and National Indian Day. Two fun-filled days of sober activities focused on celebrating recovery and cultural identity. Activities included cultural presentations, dance performances, poetry readings, and a community barbecue. Members of the recovery community in Laredo, Texas participated in Sober Fiesta 2009. In addition to local persons in recovery, treatment providers and recovery organizations from Mexico were also invited to attend. The fiesta consisted of an informational fair, followed by talks from people in recovery and local leaders. The event was highlighted by a drug and alcohol free dance to live music. Gardena, California was the site of the 5th Annual Ride for Recovery and Motorcycle Fun Run. Registered riders enjoyed the opportunity to ride through beautiful California together in the name of recovery. At the conclusion of the ride, participants joined up at the rally celebration where they enjoyed speakers, entertainment, food, prizes, and a motorcycle and car show. The In the Rooms Foundation, along with informed families, hosted the first ever South Florida Rally for Recovery at beautiful Bicentennial Park in Miami, Florida. The expo started off with a 5K walk before returning back to the park for a full day of fun that included raffles, live music, food, and other fun activities for the entire family. A&E Television Network hosted the second annual recovery rally in New York City to celebrate National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month. Thousands of people turned out for this event, joining together and forming a human bridge of recovery on the Brooklyn Bridge to draw national media attention to the fact that addiction is a treatable disease and recovery is possible. To commemorate Recovery Month, the Substance Treatment and Recidivism Reduction Program hosted an art display in the lobby of the Durham County Detention Facility in North Carolina. Incarcerated inmates who are part of this chemical dependency treatment program participated in making the Celebrate Recovery collage posters that are featured in the exhibit. My life was like before entering treatment, uh, nothing less than a mess. Uh, I was in the grasp of uh, an addiction to crack cocaine that really caused things to spiral out of control. After becoming uh, uh, incarcerated uh, and looking at uh, a lengthy jail sentence, 
uh, and wanting to avoid another lengthy jail sentence, I requested to go into treatment, you know, understanding fully that uh, if I did do another lengthy jail sentence, I would only come out to continue doing the same things that I did prior to my arrest. There is life after active uh, drug addiction, and I'm a prime example of that. Well, life for me before recovery was chaotic. Um, I was coming into an industry where alcohol uh, was very prevalent. Uh, I found myself um, not feeling normal. I felt that um, I continued to stay in bars um, while my, my coworkers that I worked with were going home, taking care of their families. I was out um, 2.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, so it, it started to be a loss of control issue for me. Today I wake up not feeling sick. I wake up every day um, with the ability to go to work and be productive. Um, I wake up every day knowing that when I do go to work, I'm able to help somebody and spread the word about recovery, um, that they're not alone, that there's programs like EAP programs um, that are out there to help people. Um, so I, I think today, in one word, um, my life has purpose today. As you can see, Thousands of Americans took part in a variety of Recovery Month activities in 2009. I hope this show inspires you to organize a Recovery Month event of your own next September. Our 2010 theme is, Join the Voices for Recovery, Now More Than Ever. Whether large or small, your event will help increase awareness for the disease of addiction and the power of recovery. I invite you to get involved in Recovery Month and visit the website recoverymonth.gov and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I urge you to continue to spread the message of recovery throughout the year and encourage those individuals who are still suffering to seek help. Addiction is our nation's number one health problem, but together we can make a difference. For a copy of this program or other programs in the Road to Recovery series, call SAMHSA at 1-800-662-HELP or order online at recoverymonth.gov and click multimedia. Every September, National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month provides an opportunity for communities like yours to raise awareness of alcohol and drug use disorders and highlight the effectiveness of treatment. In order to help you plan events and activities in commemoration of this year's Recovery Month observance, the Free Recovery Month Kit offers ideas, materials, and tools for planning organizing and realizing an event or outreach campaign that matches your goals and resources. To obtain your copy of this year's Recovery Month kit and gain access to other free publications and materials related to addiction treatment and recovery issues, visit the Recovery Month website at www.recoverymonth.gov or call 1-800-662-HELP. It's important that everyone become involved because addiction is our nation's number one health problem and treatment is our best tool to address it.